Although it's possible we say yeah and then say no and then do something else. But I think we had an idea. He wasn't sure if that's what you were teaching. Okay. Good morning, guys. So great to see the video faces. Uh, my name is Chad Curdy, and um, I teach electrical design here at WD for the last uh, nine years. Um, what we have today for you guys is um, a lot of you are graduates and you're familiar with this program, but we have an electrical program, electrical design program. And part of restructuring, lately last year we did restructuring, we moved it into a component semester. So part of that whole component semester, we merged the first year of ECDM, the electrical design, with the first year of the electrical construction. So we only have right now one year of electrical design, which was all the fundamentals and the wiring we teach them with the electrical construction students. So, um, what we do is in the second year, we have three projects, like we have done in the past, uh, 5,000 square foot apartment building and new residential, lighting, power, and voltage. And we still run uh, about 10,000 square foot commercial building, adopted by Hungary and Virginia, so thank you, for the last um, 14, 13 years or so. <laughs> so uh, that project is 10,000 square foot office building, so we do, we do it in Revit. The residential project is in CAD, we still do CAD. Uh, this part of the work is today is done in Revit 10,000. We do the lighting, the power, the mobile voltage in Revit with all the NEC calculations we have done and associated with that. And um, we do energy code, we introduce you, they do energy code for the lighting, they do, believe it or not, SPM power system analysis, short circuit, um, and they do um, load flow, and they do hard flash calculations. Now, don't ask them to interpret yet. It's the first time they ever use the software, but they know how to run it. So, in the front of you, there's the agenda for the day. Um, we have five teams, five students, five teams. We, we had a, a head who was the transition from quarter to semester. So, we, this is the smallest class I ever had since I've been done in the last 12 years. Uh, the good news is we do have a bunch of uh, first year students sitting right there. We have eight of them coming. Um, and we like to say to pick another tool from the rest of construction or more so we'll be in a two digits next week. That's a, that's a good news. So if you're looking for an internship in the summer, they're sitting right there. They will be going out in the spring, they will be presenting today. So uh, I have an agenda for you guys right here. And in front of you also, like we've done in the past, um, what the teams are going to be presenting on. Um, I was telling a few people here to the but I did this one for 11 years, this project. This is the first time I ever run it where every individual has done everything. So uh, because it's five students, um, they did every single thing. No teams. They can help each other, but there is no team. So what you're going to see, uh, they will present certain part of it, but they did every single part of the project. And uh, the MC, our MC, um, will talk about this one here. Um, I do have an evaluation sheet, guys, please, if you take a second. The last sheet that you're in front of you is a little devel sheet. If you can, um, oops, you can have it. The little devel sheet, guys, that you, if you can, uh, that you can, uh, if you can just give him an evaluation, one to ten, can be the best. So, okay, with this, I would like you guys to enjoy uh, the presentation. I'm going to introduce uh, my friend Eric here to uh, lead the presentation. Thank you. All right. Uh, I just want to say good morning to you guys. How are you doing? Thanks for coming out. Uh, I want to thank you for coming to the commercial project presentation today. Uh, we're going to start by uh, thanking Chad for being a great instructor this year and helping us prepare so well for our work. I didn't pay him. So, uh, <laughs> uh, like you mentioned, we are a small class this year, and uh, due to this, we did not break up the teams. Um, so we do feel like we had a great opportunity to do every aspect of the project and hopefully give you a fresh, knowledgeable take on this project. So uh, with that, what I'm going to do here is uh, introduce our first speaker, uh, Adam Kusserman. He's going to be presenting for us today our first, so he'll be doing our one line of power system operations. Uh, Adam, let's play golf. He'd also like to see the Minnesota Twin World Series. <laughs> we'll like you to be good. So, with that, let's give it up for Adam. Morning, guys. Morning. 
schedules. Brian will take you in depth again on this. Uh, equipment, lighting fixture, and control panel schedule. Uh, I took a snippet of this and you can probably tell I just can't really see anything in here. Um, that's just with, uh, it came from AutoCAD in the AutoCAD drawing. Uh, this is the uh, uh, control panel. Details. Um, details diagram, just some basic details on the uh, generator, generator concrete pad, trench detail, and the uh, full base. And just a few symbols I want to show. Uh, in the electrical room, we have the air handling unit. The recirculating pump, the uh, gas boiler control circuit, along with the two boiler pumps, and then your uh, basic receptacle, ACS, main panel, receptacle panel, lighting panel, and then right next to the lighting panel is the lighting control control panel. Uh, the heating and uh, heat, the heater heating unit is here along with the uh, um, uh, uh, the fan. Uh, uh, and then uh, with that uh, on the air handling unit is the uh, the VFD. One line diagram from SKM. Um, normal power comes in to the uh, ATS and feeds the, uh, feeds the main panel to the lighting panel, receptacle panel, air handling, air handling unit, uh, condense, the two condensing units, one condensing unit, and then the future 
And then the uh, the uh, two boiler pumps. And then if the, uh, if the if the normal power fails, ATS switches over to the gen, then turns on and backs up all this equipment. Truck sheets, main panel, 100, 100 amp main panel, lighting panel, 200 amp, receptacle panel, 100 amp, ATS, generator, and with that, I want to bring you guys into the road kelp. Road kelp. We did it. We did the road kelp from uh, in Microsoft Excel. Everything from uh, essential road in Article 220.14L. Um, and this is that's non-continuous. Um, fixed multi multi output assemblies and. Your, uh, your office, uh, your largest, uh, largest of the line, except the unknown receptacle load, um, size the receptacle panel with a receptacle neutral, lighting panel with a lighting panel neutral, the uh, general lighting load, largest, largest, of uh, largest on lighting load, along with track lighting, side and out, outline lighting, parking lot, and down, down from that is the motor, motor took the from 430, size and large, took the size all the motors and then took the largest by one by 425, and we came out with the main panel, 500 amp. The septal panel was, like I said, 100, and the lighting was 200. Two sets of uh, two sets of uh, 300, uh, 350 kcm, and uh, the two, the septal and lighting panels were uh, two sets of uh, um, three amp. And um, that's presentation. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody have any question for uh, Adam? Put him on the spot here. Ran away from the questions. <laughs> anybody has any questions? Any comments? Oh, you just, uh... Okay. So I'm off easy. Oh boy, you ran away at him, huh? All right, we have our next speaker is going to be Brian Lumber, and uh, like you said, Brian's going to be uh, showing you the power layout and everything for the uh, commercial building that we have. Brian enjoys long walks on the beach. Well, that's Adrian <laughs> Peterson, the last of which just violated his uh, restraining order. So we'll hand it over to Brian before the concert. <laughs> <laughs> Like Gary said, I'm Brian Lillard. I was teaching with number five. I want that matter. So, uh, let's see. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to be talking about the uh, project schedule. Uh, I'm going to be showing you a little bit about the mechanical equipment layout and circuiting. Adam already did just a little bit of that. And I'll also be showing you the power layout and circuiting for the building, uh, as well as the main panel and receptacle panel schedules. And uh, I'll be showing you the cut sheets that I have for the main panel, receptacle panel, and our automatic transfer switch. Um, so as you can see here, uh, this is the project schedule. We use Microsoft Project to do this. Um, this is kind of the schematic design phase that we have, uh, meeting with the owner and utility company and putting it together a one-line diagram uh, prior to going into the actual design phase. Uh, and you can see here, these are all pretty short steps, just a few hours for each. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily realistic when you do it one night in two hours, but uh, anyway, so it's pretty pretty small there with the, uh, with the tasks. But um, as you can see here, this is our design development phase for most of it. It actually was like way too long to put on the page, 
But um, you can see here, uh, we went in and we're uh, adding in durations and making sure that the, the schedule actually lines up with the schedule that we had. So everything that you see here is actually following uh, very closely to the dates uh, for how we actually went through designing this project. Um, and you can see that uh, kind of at the end of every week on like uh, Fridays, we had a question and discussion time with Paul Berry Engineering and all of our speakers that came in are also listed on here. Uh, and you can see here, uh, this is the Gantt chart for that. Um, and you can see the resources that we used here. Uh, so anytime we had somebody come to speak, like here's one of our Gammer, uh, here's Paul Berry Engineering coming in to answer questions for us. Uh, so we were able to put all the resources in for that. And obviously, I'm on every single one because I was the one doing the design for it. Um, and then here is our construction phase of the project. Uh, you can see broken into subtasks, we have like a rough end phase um, for the switchgear and the LD systems and our uh, power and lighting. Um, and then we had a few construction crews or electrical crews working on this. I think we had three electricians and six apprentices. Uh, so it's three separate teams uh, working on it. And so when we allocated the um, resources you to make sure that everything sort of works together so if one crew gets done at a certain time i mean trying to try to make sure they're not overlapping anything and making sure that everything's coordinated uh throughout the project so let's look at the gantt chart during the construction phase and at the end we just have the, uh, the project delivery um delivering the finished product to the customer so we do a final walkthrough with the owner um and then we get the customer approval so you can see that's a milestone there showing you know the end of or through the end of the construction phase and then the, uh, another milestone saying that the project has been approved by a customer um <clears throat> so here's another look this is my mechanical room it looks a little bit different than adam's we all kind of had a chance to try to place things in the room that we felt fit best uh, we didn't do any coordination with any other uh, contractors like so we don't necessarily know where the duct work and everything was um, but as you can see here, I have my air handle unit, uh, and it's powered uh, through a variable frequency drive, uh, and that's going to go straight over to our main panel. And then uh, the two boiler pumps next to the gas boiler, and those both have a disconnect on the wall, uh, it's going to be circuited straight to the main panel. And then uh, we have the uh, gas boiler, which just has a control circuit that is powered from the receptacle panel. Um, then we have the main panel here being powered from the auto transfer switch which goes outside to the, uh, the generator into the facility. Uh, and then the receptacle panel and the lighting panel, which are both uh, connecting to the main panel. Uh, and this right here is just a horizontal unit here that's up on the ceiling. Uh, and that is powered from the receptacle panel, I believe. And uh, here's a look at some of the mechanical equipment outside. These are just our air conditioning condensing units. Um, this is the one that is going to be existing, and then we also have a plan for a future one. Uh, the disconnects are mounted right on the side of these. Um, <clears throat> so now we're going to talk a little bit about the power layout. Uh, as you can see here, this is our main open office area, and uh, these right here are cubes along the wall. And so when we were putting the power in these, we basically just had to plan for um, one receptacle in each office uh, for general use. And then a quadruplex receptacle for data. Um, and these are our island cubes that were in the main open office. Uh, and each one of these just has a uh, two phase uh, junction box coming out of the floor or three poles. And uh, you'll basically be coming out of this junction box with a snake and running it through the cubes. Um, we actually got a chance to look at that when we threw it at home. I was glad to know that I did it. But <laughs> confirmed that when we uh, took a look at it. So. Uh, it's interesting to, to walk around that building and see um, how everything you did matches up with what's going on. I mean, some things obviously turn out a little bit differently. Um, so here's a look at just a few of the offices and conference rooms. Um, as you can see, this here is a pretty standard office layout, one receptacle on each wall, plus a quadruplex receptacle for data. Um, and then this is a conference room. It has a junction box uh, for power underneath the conference room table. And then again, an outlet on each wall for general use and a data outlet uh, that is a quadruplex receptacle. Um, this is our front entry and reception area. Um, you can see uh, there's a cabinet unit heater that is powered from a receptacle panel uh, sitting in the, the vestibule. And then you can see the receptacle layouts that we have here. Uh, this is the edge of the conference room right there, the edge of the office. And then right here is our hallway. As you can see we had uh, receptacles spaced out in there. Uh, this is our other open office. 
just kind of a straight line of cubes uh, along each wall. And it's somewhat similar to the other open office, just a bigger receptacle and a general user receptacle in each, uh, in each cubicle. Uh, in our restroom, we have one single GFCI uh, located above the counter. And this is the kitchen. Uh, you can see here, uh, there are these receptacles kind of on each wall. Uh, we had separately circuited outlets for the refrigerator, vending machine, uh, this is a coffee maker, and then a microwave and a uh, dishwasher uh, is powered from a uh, direct connection through the floor. Uh, and then this here is a uh, quadruplex receptacle mounted uh, near the ceiling for a television to be connected. Um, <coughs> Now let's take a look at the mechanical panel schedule. Uh, this was done using Revit as well. Um, so for the main panel, we use a uh, 500 amp um, panel, and it is a uh, 122 away uh, three phase four wire panel. Um, and as you can see here, this is basically what the circuiting looks like for us when we came in. Um, obviously, a three phase schedule. Um, and you can see the receptacle panel, air panel, and unit are connected on here. Uh, and it's showing your command load for each one. Um, for the panel totals, I ended up getting a total estimated demand of 282, a total connected load of 313. Uh, and then when we plan for a, you know, future sizing and future expansion of the building, we ended up getting a 500 inch panel. Uh, the receptacle panel, uh, very similar. Uh, this one ended up being a 100 inch panel, 122.08. Uh, you can see how the circuit goes on here. Also, three phase, uh, some things like these four boxes connected, uh, three poles, uh, and a lot of things are single pole, 120, uh, lots of receptacles. You can see uh, how that goes on here. And then the uh, panel tools for this one, I ended up getting uh, 91 amps for a total connected load. Um, so we ended up sizing at 100. Uh, now, I'll take a look at my equipment cut sheets. Uh, for the mechanical panel, I got the cover hammer PRL4. Uh, 208 volt, three phase, 500 amps, and a 42 pole. And then for my receptacle panels, a cutler hammer, PLR 1A, uh, 208 volt, three phase, 100 amps, and this one had 60 poles. And then the auto transfer switch uh, was a Cummins LC 500. And that's basically what I got for my cut sheets. Um, thank you for coming and watching our presentation. I actually got a Take a little opportunity to market myself. I'm actually graduating here. Today is my last day at Dunwoody. Um, and so I put my contact information on there. I am currently looking for a position. And so if you'd like to contact me, feel free. I'd love to talk to you. Um, does anybody have any questions? All right, thank you very much. <laughs>
At that point, uh, decision was decisions. Uh, we were lucky over in a realm where uh, Brian basically the type of uh, fish that we were going to be using for that. These are some of the cut sheets for the ones that uh, we found for that. So uh, this would be more of the general one right here. Uh, this is actually one of the ones that I used in uh, the break room, and this is the one that we used in the naval office area. So at that point, uh, we can go ahead and the, uh, into the software itself, and it lays it out specifically so that we know, you know, how many foot candles we need on average for that. Uh, trying to average it between so we don't have, you know, too too low of a minimum, too high of a maximum that on the stands of the room. To make sure that everything comes out looking nice, not too bad on the eye. So uh, we drop those in there and then uh, put them back in. Then we can go ahead and run the calculations so we know exactly what we're doing. This right here is the statistics for some of the rooms. So you can see, like for the core over here, I ended up with an average of 48.3 foot candles for that. And uh, I'm going to show sometimes, like uh, the maximum and the minimum that we were talking about, trying to get them to up a little bit more easily. So, some of the things like that. So, let's see. This would be the interior office lighting design. So, at the point that we had decided what the layout was going to be for uh, visual and accepted as something that we would like. What we did is we went ahead and uh, exported it back into AutoCAD, rescaled it so that we could send it back into Reddit, and, and brought that in basically kind of like as a layer of family for that. Um, and then we imported a uh, family of lighting, uh, lighting fixtures. So we imported those into there, and then at that point we can go ahead and start dropping the fixtures into place. So this is the open office area that I was talking about with one of the cut sheets, and then Right here is the two of the other cut sheets, and all this is the same thing as well. So, the next one. The uh, beautiful part about working in Reddit is searching. So, searching makes it very easy, especially when you're doing uh, the panel schedules, things like that. So, uh, what we did for the interior was we assigned 13 fixtures for every circuit. Uh, that's the way that we ended up laying that out. Uh, for the exterior, we used basically just a canopy circuit as one kind of uh, parking lights uh, as another circuit for that because they were separate corners also. So, but uh, you can see some of that right there. That's for the circuiting in this area right here. And then this is the other office that had uh, in the open office. This should have done this up. This is actually the bottom part of the open office right here. Uh, the office is down below, and then this would be the top part. So you can see just a little bit where the circuiting is on that. Uh, also with that I wrote, we can go ahead and uh, assign a switch for our uh, fixtures. So switching is pretty easy. You can add you know, a multitude of any fixture you're seeing one switch for that. Uh, for the open office, what we did is we used low voltage switches right here. And there's also a couple located down here. Um, they're assigned as the same. So these are A, B, and C. Going down to things here, here would be also A, B, and C. Um, so these ones are all assigned on one switch. And then the opposite ones that would be over on this area would be assigned to another switch. Um, this would be the, uh, would be the kind of like the the entryway right here. Um, so these would be the recent stand lights that they had for that and how we went ahead and circuited those with a motion sensor. So. Uh, for the exterior region, what we did was uh, we cropped it to a certain area uh, the amount of space that we wanted uh, just to show for that. Um, and removing the interior building, obviously, because uh, we're not using that as a calculation tool to do so. Um, what you will notice is parts of these areas right here. And the reason that we have it so big is because that actually shows light stability to show what uh, I guess what we do consider to be. Um, like light pollution. Basically, we want to make sure that we're not contributing too much to the outside for that. So, uh, once again, the cut sheets that we had for the exterior lights. So here's our full light, and then this would be the canopy light that we showed for those. Um, once again, these were uh, pretty much all specified for that. So uh, we tried to stick with that one. Obviously, in the real world, we don't work together. To make sure that you're getting the right amount of light and work together with the orange to make sure that you're getting something that could visually be easy to design. So here is what we did once again uh, with dragging everything from Reddit to AutoCAD and then back into Visual so we had it all set up correctly. Um, and then dropping in uh, the calculation zones and everything for that as well. 
So at that point, uh, we can go ahead and you can actually assign where we're going to drop in uh, the individual fixtures here to show how much light we want to give into those areas, and then go ahead and run the calculations to make sure that we're getting the correct min maxes and the right amount of light that we want to have for those areas. So then, from that point, once you know that everything is laid out to the uh, specifications that you like, we can go ahead, export back into CAD, scale it correctly, and bring it back into Revit. And at that point, we can go ahead and uh, with the families that we loaded, we can start going ahead and dropping in the pictures and places that they were already assigned. And you can see kind of like the circuit that was there for the uh, for the part for the uh, whole lights for the parking lot. So. And then uh, some of the exterior work, these are the canopy lights right here, the runway exterior right there. And then right there is some of the uh, chemicals that run the power from the hybrid outside of the air conditioning units. Alright, uh, so circuiting for the outside, like I mentioned before, um, the circuit devices per circuit, that was what we used for the inside. Uh, this right here is just the building itself for the canopy light. Um, and like I said, what we did was we just used the canopy lighting as one circuit. And the parking lots as one other circuit, so we just have two circuits for those. Um, the one thing that I, I especially didn't get to see was the circuiting for the uh, lights themselves actually went back to the primary variable locations inside the building. Um, I didn't put those on this one, they're only on, on the interior run for that. I didn't feel like contributing to the confusion because people might think they're outside or something. So, <coughs> uh, so and actually, that's where that would be for switching, sorry. Um, which you can see right here for the canopy lights, they're switching their way back to the interior for the uh, primary. So uh, those devices would switch to the primary. Uh, emergency light. So this right here would be uh, for the break room area. You can see some of the emergency pictures that we dropped right here uh, for the emergency light at time, and that does have a bug eyes on it. And then this one right here just outside the door, and what we use for those for just egress pathways was just the bug eyes, just to make sure that we're leading people in the right direction to know, you know enough light to get to the edge for that. Um, maintaining an average of one foot candle uh, for the space for the egress pathways. And then uh, circuiting itself, emergency fixture lights are pretty easy. Uh, we circuit them just to the, uh, to the light circuiting fixtures that we had there before. So um, it makes it easy for us. We don't have to put it on a main panel. We don't want to make sure that anybody can turn off the specific emergency lighting fixtures or anything like that so you can't play with it too much. Um, obviously, because they're coming on when everything else is on top, so they're short on battery power. And these are the cut sheets that I use for that. So. Alright, so this is the lighting panel that we chose for this for the uh, three cylinder brands that actually on the power on line 1A. Um, so you have to do that because you get 2A, but it's a 400 amp uh, panel for that. And then the uh, lighting control, which would be uh, 20 amp relays that would be used for that. Uh, the relay schedule, and what this actually is, is there's a total of 31 actual relays that would be for that. Um, for the relay schedule itself would actually be 36. That's kind of the standard size for that. So um, every switch is assigned relay, and all those operate off of the phone level system. Here's the fixture schedule. Basically allows it for uh, our construction crews to know what specifically type of light they're going to be putting in those areas. And then also for future reference too, uh, a good way to know what the you have in that area is if you are going to be replacing it, just know what that and what you have in that area already. So that would be easier for future reference. This is just kind of a larger view for that. I'm going to read it left to right for that so you can see. Uh, like for the open office, we use uh, this symbol for that one with A, or I'm sorry, this is the B one right here. So fearless lighting for that. Uh, we use a wattage and uh, we use a light loss back here. Uh, so when we're at 0.75, we use a standard user of 22. So. This is the panel schedule. That was what I was mentioning was really great about Revit was being able to have these panel schedules come in automatically through Revit. So this is kind of a little bit of a hard one to see, but um, they're broken up into two different sides here. So you've got the odd number right here, and the even number at the side here. Alright, and then the last part <coughs> is the specification. Uh, what this gives is detailed information about equipment and wiring methods to be used. So uh, this is a fairly big one. I just gave you kind of a cut sheet right there of uh, kind of a breakdown of what is all contained in our specifications that's given to us already. So 
the computer shows that everything is coordinated. Um, when they touch any video short, it wouldn't work. Okay, I showed us how to kind of manipulate it to work together to get a total victory, but not to touch any. And then that's everything I have for you guys. Any questions? Thank you, Matt. All right. Last, certainly not least, Karen Holkinson. Karen is a uh, theatrical lighting designer and stage manager, and uh, she is the only one we have in our class. So we think we're putting up last few months. <laughs> Big trap in the for class. So, hand it over to Karen. But now for something completely different. But now for something completely different. Gotcha.
kind of see how it all boils down to how it all be connected up into the system here. The fire alarm system. They do have a sprinkler system there. I thought we saw that one over there, which of course is after I had found this out. So there are no sprinkler systems listed in this one. Again, everything in red that show you where all the fire alarm systems are and the different points that they have. Uh, fire strokes for whatever reason are upside down. I haven't quite figured out why that's that way, but that's where the F is upside down. They did want to have um, horn strokes throughout the, all the common areas in the building. They wanted to have um, smoke detectors throughout the building because they're getting all that covered for safety purposes. They wanted visual alarms specifically, just visual alarms in the restrooms and the conference rooms. Um, that smoke detectors can be placed in the supply unit and the exit unit of the air management supply. Um, the exterior, exterior doors would need to have a full station nearby them. Um, they would have the insulated panel in the best show. Probably not too far from the security keypad would be my guess. At least that's where I put it in mine. And that the main control panel would be in 107 as well. That's where I put mine right next to my more so just a general this is what we probably would use this is what I picked for it just a standard one the same thing with the smoke detector then how it all kind of would go back to the panel throughout the building not to scale the force but that's still how it would roll there's something chat There will be work very soon when the clips cancel. Any questions? Michelle Poulerkson, who is here, 
uh, what they do for us is they, uh, uh, they line up a bunch of very top-notch experts in their field, like from software about systems and generators to everything else that companies have done to do. And we do a lot of high-profile tours. Um, we do currently switch the autonomous plant, and we do Boston Scientific uh, Data Center, and, and Allianz Data Center, Boston Scientific Plant, and, and a bunch of others. So in this frame, there will be another presentation, uh, most likely in the second week or the third week of May, because we'll get, uh, we'll, we'll get information about this. So uh, the next project will be 25,000 square foot industrial building with a manufacturing floor, where we take the whole system into four agents in the southern with backup generator, finally switch here uh, for a total amp of 4,000 amp. That's the size of amp size of the building. Really great. Do you guys have any questions for me or our students? Before we, anybody has any questions, any comments? I know you guys were very uh, generous by not putting them on the spot. I know there's a lot of other questions that, uh, like for example, this optical panel that has a feed of 20 amps, I don't know if I have choice that. So, um, <laughs> so they have to go back and correct it and just have to change that lighting panel from 20 amps into a 200 amp. But uh, that's a mistake in one um, So, any questions, guys? Any comments? Like I said, please stick around here. We have coffee. We have, uh, we have also donuts that need to be eaten. Um, so thank you, guys.